One of the main things is the cost of the loan, and that's where a lot of people come up to me seminar after seminar asking me, what is this POC or this yield spread premium that was paid to a broker? Generally in the thousands, as high as 23,000 I've seen in the past. Remember what I was telling you about when you choose a prepayment penalty in the matrix along with your index and along with the other features you have to de dictate, will determine how much the cost of the loan is to you. Traditionally we call that points. Now if you do a high prepayment penalty, like three years, and you do a high margin, three and a half or more, there generally is a large rebate as high as two or three points. Now, a three hundred thousand dollar loan, that can be nine thousand, twelve thousand, or eight thousand. A significant amount of money. The truth is, that's your money, or at least it's your money if you know about it. And I want you to know about it now. And I'm going to show you where that comes into effect right here. This example of a real wholesale sheet shows three different indexes, the one month MTA, the one month coffee, cost of fund indexes, and the one month LIBOR. Those are three of the more popular indexes at this time. As you see for the LIBOR, it was 3 point, or 5.3 make that. <laughs> Each one of the indexes has a column, as you see here, showing the index. Here for the MTA, which is 4.2 something. There for the LIBOR, 5.3 and for the coffee 3.78 now the lowest one doesn't necessarily mean that's the best one let's zoom in and look a little closer here at just one of the type of indexes the one month MTA and let's look at the columns showing all the the list of numbers going down one of the first things you'll see is rate and that's not the interest rate that's actually the minimum payment rate and you'll see that column, it's one all the way down. One percent is a minimum rate for that for the first year. Another column that's important, again, is the index. For the one month MTA, the index is at 4.2, and that changes regularly. Also, a very, very important column is the lifetime cap, and also the prepayment penalty period, six month, 12 month, or 36 month. All of those combined to help make a better decision for you. As we look at another MTA wholesale listing, we see this one has a minimum rate of 1.25%. And one of the things to check out here is in the 36 month prepayment penalty, if you were to get a large margin, there is a rebate available or a yield spread premium of 5%. And that goes to whoever knows. One of the very, very dangerous parts of the option arm is the prepayment clause. It's not in the prepayment clause itself, but it's in the rebate or cost of that particular feature. As you remember from our demystifying a loan process, a loan is a very fair investment vehicle. You give, the lender gives. You take, the lender takes. And the prepayment penalty is a feature that is give and take there. And that comes in the flavors of zero year prepayment, six month prepayment, one year, two year, or three year. And know this, if there's a three year prepayment penalty on this, someone's making a lot of money. And it's generally only those who know about it. Now what I want to show you is how that works and within the matrix, why you want to be aware of exactly what is happening with the cost of the loan based on your prepayment penalty, which is the biggest factor in the cost of this loan. Let's take a look here. Now to see this danger spot, let's look at the one month MTA index. And that index is a very common one. But we're going to look at the bottom third down below here. And if you see at the bottom third here, we see a minimum pay rate of 1.25% and a 36 month prepayment penalty. That's where the largest rebates and the largest yield spread premiums lay in wait. Let's go ahead and price this option arm. And again, the first thing we have to choose is a margin to go on top of our index. We're going to choose 3.5% as our margin. And what we do, we take our existing index, which is the MTA, which is currently 4.282%. Now to get the true rate, we add those two together, and that'll equal our 
true amortized rate. And we find in this case, it comes out to 7.782%. But it's an option arms. Remember, we can pay a minimum amount of 1.25%, which is about half the payment of a 7.782 payment. Or we can pay from 1.25 anywhere up to, and including the truly 30-year amortized rate of 7.82%, or even above that, as if it was a 15% rate. Again, remember, that's it, an option arm. Pay at least the minimum of 1.2 on up anywhere past 7.782. Now let's look at the cost or rebate, and this is the dangerous part. If you see next to the 3.5%, there's a number over there. You see it's a minus 4.0. It's right over here. And that represents your yield spread premium or cost or, na or amount that comes back. There it is right there. That's a significant amount. 4% Four, um, times a $100,000 loan is $4,000. On a $12,000 loan, that's $13,000, a $12,000. Now, if you look on the right there, there's actually a maximum rebate you can get. In this case, it's 3.25% interest. And that's roughly uh, $3,250 or $10,000 on a $300,000 loan. Anywhere, beware, this is going to someone's pocket. Now, if you're using that prepayment penalty to its maximum, a three-year, as I said earlier, there's a pretty large rebate coming back to someone. Hopefully, it's you, or it's at least going towards against your costs. Quite often, that's where people don't find out about it till after the loan closes or it's the day of closing. And I want to show you about that so you'll know what to watch out for, at least be aware of it, so you can use it again to your benefit and not to some mortgage broker's benefit. Here you see we're looking at a good faith estimate, a GFE. Now in a GFE, we see here the 1% interest rate. That's a darn good clue this is an option arm. Now also, we see on the far right, POC. That stands for paid outside of closing. That means someone's getting m money back from the lender that someone like a borrower may not know about. And it's a good clue here because we see no loan origination fee, no loan discount fee, and down below, no mortgage broker fee. All those areas in the 800 series is where we'd find the fee going to the mortgage broker. Since we see nothing there, we must assume he's getting paid somewhere else. Here's where we might get a clue as to who's getting paid on the option arm. It's the HUD-1 or the estimated HUD-1 from your escrow company. And we'll look below to see who's getting what. Now here we see what's going on. If you look at the middle, you see the POC, paid outside of closing, $3,675. That money is going to whoever knows about it. Too often, the loan broker, and not being known to the borrower. So look carefully at your estimated and final HUD ones and question those POCs. Well, now we've seen a lot of the features of the option arm, and we have a better understanding of what it is. So, where should we use it? One of the first things to look at is on the monthly payment. As you can see, it's about half of what you would normally pay in a 30-year fixed. So, the first question to look at is, can I do something with that extra money that I'm saving? Better than putting it into equity into the home. If you have a choice, an option that exceeds the true interest rate you're paying, that makes an attractive feature. Additionally, by paying tomorrow today's debt, you are saving whatever inflation costs go over that period. A huge savings to you there. That makes it a benefit. The type of place you might want to use this is in a high appreciating area. If your home is appreciating more than the interest rate you're, you're paying or not paying, that becomes a feature again. If your property is appreciating 2 or 5%, but your true rate is 7%, then you're going behind every month you make that payment. 
Another reason is just pure cash flow. If that's the only way you can afford this property or home, or you need that, or say emergencies come up, it becomes a benefit to you to be able to lower your house payment by taking the minimum payment of around 1%. Again, another feature towards you. Well, there you have it for the Option R. As you can see, it's a very, very powerful tool. It's a loan that can keep your payments low and allow you to build up equity in the house, hopefully faster than you build up the principal payment that you're not making. And that's one of the key features we talked about. There are a few more items that can be important in your circumstance, and that comes with whether you're buying investment property, primary residence, or secondary home. And we can talk about that in a future time also. With that, I want to thank you for watching this. And remember, you can go to Demystifying the Loan Process, our keynote product that helps you understand a lot about loans. Gives you the benefits of understanding what they are, how they're created, and how they can best help you. And how you can maximize the value of any home loan you get, whether it's for your own primary home, again, your secondary home, or even an investment property. Thank you. Remember to look up Your Loan Genie, and you can go to that site, Put in your comments about what you think about this video. How has it helped you? What things would you like to know that you didn't learn yet about this? We're here to help you get the loan that will best help you accomplish your goals and your dreams. With that, I want to thank you again. This is Mike Seeley with Your Loan Genie. Thank you.